Hello, everyone. This is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 103rd episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I want to thank you for being here with me today. I hope you have an incredibly lucky week this week. Getting lucky is good. I hope you get lucky. The blinds in this hand are 150-300 with a 25 ante. We are playing in a $1,000 buy-in World Series of Poker events. And a player who I've labeled as a tight lady limps under the gun. In general, when someone who you perceive as tight limps under the gun, it usually means a decently strong range, perhaps medium pairs and then big cards and maybe suited connectors. So basically a range that most people would typically raise with, this person is going to take that range and limp with it. Some people only limp with their absolute nut hands, hoping to limp re-raise, and other players limp with a much wider range. A player in fourth position from Brazil calls, he has 8,000 chips. A tight player calls in the hijack or low jack seat, and then I get pocket nines on the button. Whenever you think that the initial limper may be looking to limp re-raise, that's a spot where you usually want to consider calling, especially with a hand that you don't want to get limp re-raised off of. If you have a hand like ace-jack, for example, raising the limper becomes a much more palatable play because when you get limp re-raised, you know you're just crushed and you can fold. And when you get limp called, you're frequently in at least decent shape. But with pocket nines, this is a hand that I definitely want to see a flop with. So I'm going to call. It may seem crazy to let multiple people see a flop with your pocket nines. But you have to realize, we're not playing this hand trying to get it all in blindly anytime three lower cards flop. We're going to play well after the flop and see what develops. So I limp, and then the big blind checks. Flop comes... Queen, 10, 9, 2 hearts. So I have a set, and there are two hearts on board. Everyone checks to the lady, the under-the-gun type lady, who bets 500 into the 2,500 pot. The guy from Brazil calls. The type player folds. And now it is back to me. So at this point, I have to ask, how can I get the stacks into this pot? And I think in this spot, I think you want to make a raise to about 2,000. I don't think you want to raise too large because we really don't want to blow our opponents off of random 10s and random 9s. If they have draws, they're going to call pretty much no matter how much we raise. And notice that unless we make it gigantic, all the reasonable draws are going to be getting the right price to call no matter what. So we're not really concerned with pricing out the draws. Our main concern here is pricing in the marginal made hands that are drawing dead. Like it would be a disaster for me if my opponents were to fold a queen or a 10. So for that reason, I like a raise on the smaller side. In this hand, I actually made it 1,500, so even smaller than I suggest here. Uh, looking back at this hand, though, I think I do prefer 2,000. I think that's going to get called by both players a lot of the time. Um, of course, both players call 1,000 more, no problem. And you may be asking yourself, well, aren't you scared of getting outdrawn? And you're not really afraid of it because you typically know which cards are bad. I mean, a king is obviously bad, a jack is obviously bad, an eight is obviously bad, and a heart is obviously bad. Pretty much every other card is about as clean as it could be. So we're going to play pretty well going to the turn. And often when a bad card does come on the turn, it's going to check through. And if it doesn't check through, you can easily call, recognizing that you are probably drawing to the nuts. So anyway, turns to two of clubs, a complete brick. That's exactly what I was looking for. Both players check. And at this point, the pot is 6,500. And I think if I bet something like... Uh, so the issue here is the guy from Brazil has thirty has 6,200 behind, so he has roughly a pot size bet. So pretty much any bet I make will roughly commit him, but at the same time, I don't want to make a huge bet, perhaps of 6,200, just to you know obviously set the guy from Brazil all in, because a big bet like that may make the tight lady fold. So I think we want to bet a little bit on the smaller side in this scenario, maybe 3,500, and that is what I do. I bet 3,200, and interestingly enough, both players call. Kind of surprised to see both the tight player and the Brazilian call. The player from Brazil probably has a draw, almost certainly. Whenever he overcalls here, putting in a huge portion of his stack, it's usually the sign of just a very strong flush draw. So we know we need to fade the flush draws, most likely. And the tight lady could have pretty much anything. River's a queen, completely offsuit queen, so we have a full house. And then, much to my surprise, the tight lady bets 7,000 out of her 13,000 chip stack into the 16,000 chip pot. So what in the world does that mean? Well, it's pretty much screaming that she has a queen, but would she even bet with a random queen for value? Like, say she has ace-queen. Would she bet that for value? 
which she bet king queen, given there are obviously a lot of straights and random two pairs out that she loses to. And I don't know. It's a tough thing to, to say. Uh, Brazilian player folds, which really lets us know he had a draw. And now it's back to us. Do we call the 7,000? Do we ever consider folding, thinking she obviously has queen 10 or pocket 10s or pocket queens? Um, do we call, because you know, her hand's great, or do we go all in, thinking that she obviously has a king, or obviously has a queen and will call her all in? I think this is a spot where, looking back at this hand, I think I should have gone all in. And the reason for that is that our opponent's never going to fold a queen. And of the queens she could have, the reasonable ones are not full houses. They're just three of a kind. Um, of course, our, she could have queen 10, but that's really the only queen I'm losing to. I'm also losing to pocket 10s, but you think she would probably re-raise that on the flop. Same thing with pocket queens. So looking at this hand, I think I should have gone all in on the river. I don't expect her to call me if she has some random bluff, but really, is the tight lady bluffing too often? I would guess not. So she bet 7,000, I decided to just call in this spot, and looking back now, I think I should have raised. And notice the raise would have been a minimum raise. Um, much to my surprise, very, very much to my surprise, she shows up with king 10 for middle pair, that somehow got there on the river, turning into an improved middle pair because, you know, there's a queen on the board now. So I don't really know what she was doing here. I don't know if she thought her queen or her middle pair was good and was just value betting it. I don't know if she was trying to bluff. Whenever you're playing against amateur players, it is really hard to know what they are thinking. And this is a very clear hand in my mind that should be checked because you beat all the draws. And if your opponents all check through, you're going to win. And if you happen to be against a queen, a queen's just never going to fold. So you are never making your opponents fold better hands. So this seems like a very, very poor bet by my opponent. So make sure you do not do this. A very clear sign of an amateur is someone who bets just because they think they have the best hand. And that is not a good enough reason to bet. In order to value bets, you have to think that worse hands are going to call you more than half of the time when you get called. I can guarantee you here, when this tight lady gets called, she's beat almost every time. And I can also guarantee you that it's not a good bluff because the better hands, queens and better, will not fold. Perhaps the only better hand she will get to fold is ace-10, and then maybe jacks and maybe kings and maybe aces. But those hands probably don't raise the flop and then bet the turn anyway. So not a very well-played hand by my opponent. That's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I hope you have enjoyed it. I wish you the best of luck in your games this week, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks for being here today.